The East Carolina football team held its annual Pro Day in Greenville on Thursday. Thank you for tuning in to Tech TV. I'm Caroline West. And I'm Josh Graham. So Josh, you were at Pro Day yesterday, so tell us a little bit about it. Well, Caroline, it was a rainy afternoon in Greenville, which delayed some of the on-field activities at the Clipmore practice complex. But when it subsided, it was J Shane Carden, Justin Hardy, and several more Pirates taking the field and showcasing their talents in front of pro scouts. There were representatives from all 32 NFL teams in attendance, and even one from the Canadian Football League. Also in attendance was Kai Jones, who has more from Pro Day. Shane Carden and Justin Hardy, among other Pirates, returned for ECU's Pro Day to perform for NFL and CFL scouts. Carden says he wanted to show off. I want to come out here and show, you know, I've changed my motion quite a bit in the last three weeks. All uh, right, uh, Shane, you know, he did a great job. You, know, you can definitely see the offseason work that he has put in and those shoulder hand moves. Carden has been working with 1986 Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde on throwing. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was sitting with one of the guys catching for me down there, and Vinny had played in the league longer from that kid was alive. Um, <laughs> so just a guy who's just been uh, through so many different offenses and, and so many different scenarios and situations just to take his mind and hear stories about you know his experience. So it was an awesome. After Carton threw, he talked about his performance. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, again, the ball's coming out hot. I feel good about it, and um, that was a pretty good day. Hardy looked good, but he did have to deal with the weather. But did he make an excuse? Oh, no, no, it's just a little bit of adversity, you know. It's one of the things that I'm used to here at ECU, you know. We get a lot of adversity at times, you know. And uh, basically, you know, depending on what type of person you are, it depends on how you uh, take a person. Hardy is looked at as what many believe is a day two slot in the draft. With Pro Day and the Combine done, Hardy says that he will continue to work hard. Uh, still training, you know, I make sure I stay on top of everything, you know. Uh, not giving my body anything bad, you know, just staying on top of everything, you know, um, maybe some power workouts here and there, but um, that's one of the big things that you know, I just want to make sure I'm on top of all that. For all the young athletes who competed today, their next hope is for the NFL. For Tech TV, I'm Kai Jones. The NFL draft kicks off April 30th and concludes on May the 2nd. We'll have more from sports a little later on. America's Next Top Model winner Whitney Thompson visited campus Thursday to talk to students about what it's like to be a plus-size model. Whitney was the winner of Cycle 10 on America's Next Top Model and was the show's first plus-size model to win the competition. In her presentation, she talked about her journey on America's Next Top Model and really made a point to talk about health and being comfortable in your own skin. Well, this spring, many students are taking a healthy challenge called Pirate Fit. By just working out and making healthy choices, participants will reach levels and win prizes. Reporter Ashley Bowles has the story. Well, I work at a day camp, so I have to be at the pool a lot, and so I just wanted to be fit and feel good about myself. Sophomore Stephanie Griffin was motivated to start Pirate Fit three semesters ago and is still active with the program. But she was discouraged that she could not reach higher than the t-shirt level. I really just don't have enough weeks because I don't work out every day um, so I can only do it two three times a week if that so just the length of the program I generally can't reach it but that's fine with me I still get a t-shirt. There are two levels students and faculty can reach. Participants receive a Pirate Fit t-shirt after tracking 20 workouts. After 30 workouts participants names are put in a raffle for a student store gift card. Dr. Phyllis Horns is the Vice Chancellor of Health Sciences. She says that Pirate Fit and other programs like it are beneficial. We all benefit from these programs because uh, they do keep us aware and they help to, to keep us accountable. Participants can complete workouts in the rec center or even outside playing frisbee. Any kind of physical activity counts. Most of the time that I count stuff for Pirate Fit, I'm actually at the ECU rec center doing the, I guess they call the weight room. Um, I do a lot of the machines there. ECU has many programs, such as Pirate Fit, that encourage a healthy lifestyle. We are an academic health science center campus, and so we have a lot of programs on this campus. Unlike some other campuses that don't have strong health sciences areas, uh, but we have strong programs across the whole campus. Although the program has many benefits, Griffin says there could be changes made to the schedule. I think it could be a little bit longer. I think I worked out for, I want to say, maybe two to three weeks before Pirate Fit started the semester. And I was starting really hard, and so I wish I could have tracked that with Pirate Fit. The emphasis has to be on creating that balance and, and making it something that's livable for everybody. Not everybody's a jogger, for instance. Uh, not everybody can ride a bicycle. But there are other kinds of activities that uh, people can do. No matter how participants accomplish workouts, it all boils down to just doing them and keeping track with the program. We are all better students, better workers, better people 
when we are healthy. Students and faculty can continue to track their workouts and make healthy choices through Pirate Fit. The program continues until mid-April. This is Ashley Bowles reporting for Tech TV. If you want to join in on the challenge, you can register anytime until Pirate Fit ends in mid-April. On to sports. East Carolina will play its inaugural set of American Conference baseball games this weekend against the Memphis Tigers. A week ago, Cliff Coblin's Diamond Bucks were riding high on a season-best six-game winning streak. However, since then, ECU has lost three in a row, most recently getting trounced 13-2 by High Point on Wednesday night. Due to rain, there was no game on Friday night, and a doubleheader double was scheduled between East Carolina and Memphis, set to begin 1 p.m. on Saturday. Out at spring practice, the East Carolina football team was outfitted in shoulder pads for the first time this week. There are several position battles already taking place at the Clipmore practice complex and even more new faces getting acclimated to six-year coach Ruffin McNeil's program. The Pirates will host their first of three scrimmages this spring on Saturday morning, and the annual Purple Gold Spring Game is scheduled for 2.30 p.m. on April the 18th. Mm -hmm. And it'll get here right before we know it. Well, the sixth annual Spaz Fest kicked off last weekend. The celebration started with, on Thursday with music beginning at noon. Reporter Kai Jones talked with the festival's creator about the history. Here's Kai with the story. Spaz Fest started about six years ago by Jeff Blender. Spaz Fest kind of started because there wasn't anything like it going on. Um, the history of it stems from kind of uh, underground shows and just trying to get stuff done um, without proper venue support or um, really any support from the city itself. Uh. The annual festival started out underground but has migrated to mainstream. At first the city was looking down upon it, now they are out with open arms. That just was me being stubborn and not going away. Um, even when the town was kind of stamping on me a little bit, the, uh, the thing was like, you know, I have to do it. Like, these bands are coming through. Um, do I want it to be illegal? No. Should it be supported? Yes. It took a long time for that to happen. It took showing the venues that they can trust us. Blender has tried to improve the music scene since he's gotten to Greenville. I want people to know that, yeah, Greenville has it. It just needs to be tickled a little bit. You gotta like, you gotta really, um, you, you do have to push hard to get it. But when it happens, it's like the best place to be for um, entertainment and live stuff. Even though he has moved to Philadelphia, Blender loves to come back and help with the music. People care about music here. They need it. It's like they don't have that kind of culture at the moment, and having some of that culture come in inspires more culture. And just to to feel that energy here, I, it's not even in Philly. I go there, and it's, there's a nice passion and stuff, but it's like they don't need it there as much as Greenville needs it, and that comes across in the way people react to uh, getting something that's awesome. Over the years, Blender has met people to help him continue to put Spaz Fest on, including Alyssa Carper, who has been extremely helpful with vendors and other things. Especially working with venues or working with different companies in town, it's a lot about the legacy of Spaz. Spaz Fest has done well to support local businesses in the past and will continue to. Like, let's have a great time, but let's do it for the right reasons. Let's support this venue that's hosting us, keep them alive. Let's. Let's give this money that we make extra to an organization we care about or an individual that needs us. So having that element is like, you know, add that to that to that fire, it's like, whoa, look at that place, that thing's beautiful. Blender would love for Spaz Fest to benefit ECU. In the long run, man, if we can get up there where kids are like, Greenville, I know about that from Spaz Fest, I'm going to ECU. Man, that would be a great thing to do. Spaz Fest has been a community event for a while and doesn't intend to go anywhere. And I think we've been very lucky to talk to the correct people, to talk to people who who understand that Spaz Fest is magical and this town needs it. With Tech TV, I'm Kai Jones. Thank you, Kai. This weekend, college students from all over the Carolinas will travel to Camden, South Carolina for the 83rd annual Carolina Cup. ECU students Paige Rush and Reagan Daughtry will be attending the event for the second time. Well, it's a horse race. But uh, basically it's just a bunch of college kids going to big field and dressing up really nice and drinking all day. Students say the best part of the event is choosing what to wear. With fun hats and colorful dresses, there's so much to choose from. But Rush and Daughtry share a few words of advice on how to survive the eventful day. Just make sure to hydrate and um, pace yourself. 
it's a lot harder to like find people so it's good to like have a meetup spot or have like everyone on the same plan so you know where to go. Fun hats and colorful clothing sounds like my type of style. <laughs> well thank you for watching Tech TV I'm Caroline and this is Josh and we will see you next week.